Hello everyone, my name is Julio Araújo dos Santos, I'm a postgraduate student at Universidade Federal Fluminense, and in this video I'm going to present the article Modeling Mass Transfer Through a Porous Medium of a Recirculating Mass System. The agenda for this presentation covers the following topics, introduction, problem formulation with chemical kinetics and mass transfer, results and conclusion. So, the brewing process is the production of beer. It starts with a cereal grain that is a source of starch which can be converted to fermentable sugars. Brewing consists basically of the stages shown in the slide. In this study, we focus on the mashing phase. That is, the addition of milled barley malt to a vessel called mashtan with water at a specific temperature. These conditions provide the activation of the malt enzymes and the conversion of starch into fermentable sugars as we can see in the figure. First, alpha amylase is responsible for the conversion of starch into dextrins and maltotriose. And beta amylase is responsible for the conversion of dextrins into glucose, maltose and limited dextrins. Mashing is followed by a lautering phase in which the words produced in mashing is separated from grains. This is usually performed on a separate vessel, the lauter tongue, in which the porous bed formed by the remaining solid material acts as a filtering medium through which the wort flows. In more compact systems, which can be common microbrewers or between home brewers, these two processes are done in the same vessel and many times in parallel. These are called recirculating mass systems. They are automated systems where the wort is constantly recirculated to the grain bread and temperature control is usually done on the wort leaving the porous bed. There are two main ways to heat the wort, both using a pump for recirculation. The rims, that is, recirculation infused mass system, it recirculates the wort over an electric heating. The heat element can be electric or gas. It uses direct heat on the tube, and the pump recirculates to keep the entire flow heated and avoid scorching the wort. The herms that is, heat exchange recirculating mass system, otherwise recirculates the words through a heat exchanger, usually in the form of a coiled metal tube inside a vessel of hot water, the hot liquid term. The whole process involves more valves and pipes than we show in the figure. The figure just isolates the part of the process that is relevant to the study. Now, I'm going to talk about some benefits of these systems that are the temperature control is more precise there is no need to rely entirely in the mesh tones isolation repeatability that is important when working with large homebrew systems and the possibility to perform complex mesh, mesh schedules and about the study motivation 2019 beer yearbook data from the ministry of agriculture shows that we had a 36 percent increase in the number of registered brewers in Brazil from 2018 to 2019. The number of beers registered has been increasing also. The industry is in constant growth, so it is important to pay attention to innovation as is the case with the advanced systems that can improve the process control which were subject of this study. The objective of the study is to investigate how the hydrolysis of starch will occur in recirculating mass systems. First, Kojonen developed a model describing the hydrolysis of starch in mashing. Quintanilla adapted the model to study the effect of a variable temperature on the sacrification of barley malt. Later on, Zamboni presented a heat conduction analysis during the production of wort in a cylindrical vessel. This paper presents an extension of the model to include the effects of wort flowing through the porous grain bread during meshing. So before the mathematical model, it's necessary to establish some assumptions. We consider mass transfer in a reacting system flowing through porous medium, the porous grain bed. And the control volume is a cylinder, and we consider symmetry around the z-axis isothermal operation, adiabatic all the walls, one-dimensional uniform flow over the cross-section of the vessel, and in this preliminary analysis, we consider negligible mass diffusion. The porous medium is said to be homogeneous and isotropic. And finally, seepage velocity is said to be the product of intrinsic average velocity times the medium porosity. 
Another matter we have to establish is that starch needs to be gelatinized so that it can be converted to dextrins and maltotriose by the action of alpha amylase. The quantity U represents the mass fraction of ungelatinized starch. As we can see, below T subscript U, all starch is ungelatinized and above T subscript T, all starch is gelatinized. Between these thresholds, we obtain the mass fraction of ungelatinized starch by the following relation. In the chemical kinetics, we can see that starch is converted to maltotriose and dextrins by the action of alpha amylase. Thus, the rate of production of starch is given by the following equation, where the coefficients gamma 5 corresponds to the mass fraction of starch consumed per mass of maltotriose produced. The coefficients A5 and A2 will be explained in the following slides. The quantity U is the mass fraction of ungelatinized starch, starch as we saw before. Dextrin is converted to glucose, maltose, and limited dextrins by beta amylase enzyme. Thus, the rate of production of dextrins is written as the following equation. The coefficients gamma 3 corresponds to the mass fraction of dextrin consumed as glucose is produced, and the coefficient gamma 4 corresponds to mass fraction of dextrin consumed as maltose is produced. The rate of production of glucose, maltose, maltotriose, and limited dextrins are written as follows. The enzymes contained in the grains are dissolved in the liquid phase, where they are denaturated at a rate that depends on temperature. In this process, the rate of production of each enzyme in the liquid phase is given by the following equation, where alpha L and beta L are enzyme concentrations dissolved in the liquid phase, which are given in terms of activity. The coefficients K alpha and K beta are the maximum specific rates of enzyme destruction and the coefficients A2, A5, P3, P4, P6 represents the rate of enzymatic conversions. Here we can see the dependency on temperature in these equations. Now about mass transfer, considering an isotropic medium, mass transfer in the porous medium is written as a convection diffusion equation for a general species I for I equals to 1 corresponds to starch, I equals to 2 corresponds to dextrins, equals to 3 corresponds to glucose, equals to 4 corresponds to maltose, 5 corresponds to maltotriose, and 6 corresponds to limited dextrins. The first term is the accumulation term, the second term is related to advection, the third term is related to diffusion, and finally, that xi is related to generation or consumption, as we saw before. The term Vz is seepage velocity. For the enzymes, the mass transport equations are given by the following, where alpha g and beta g are enzyme concentrations in the wet malt, also given in terms of activity. Although diffusion is included in the previous equation, for this investigation it is considered negligible. The boundary and the initial conditions are given by the following. The initial condition assumes that the all carbohydrate concentrations are uniform, as given by xy0, as are the enzyme concentrations, as given by alpha L0 and beta L0, and alpha G0 and beta G0. The presented equations were solved using the Wolfram Mathematica function and the solve for solving nonlinear coupled PDE systems. The adapted solution options employ mostly automatic settings and modifying two solution parameters. Max step fraction is set to 1 over 100 and max step size is set to 1 over 10. The numerical values for the parameters and initial values for a variety of malt called Kimpi malt employed in the solution are given in this table. They were experimentally estimated by Kojone. Here we can see the results of the mathematical model. The figure presents the concentration distribution and the mesh vessel for different mesh types. As can be seen, 
In initial mass times, the concentration of starch decreases almost uniformly throughout the vessel, as the production of carbohydrates resulting from the conversion of starch increases. However, near the vessel inlet, the concentration profile is different from the rest, due to unconverted words being injected at C equals to zero, the vessel inlet. When we examine the evolution of concentration with time, we know that most of the starch is converted into starch. However, the effect of the advection component becomes evident as the uniformly concentrated zone progresses towards the vessel outlet. At the same time that starch is transported by advection, it is consumed by the action of enzymes and converted. The concentration of carbohydrates, on the other hand, increases outside the influence zone of advective transport, as the starch is just being converted into carbohydrates. The next figure displays outlet concentrations for different mesh lengths, and shows that for shorter vessel lengths, although initially the concentration of fermentable sugars increases as the conversion of starch occurs, the effect of advectivity Advective transport is felt earlier soon at the outlet of the vessel, and the concentration of species become constant over time. It is evident from the data that for longer vessels, advective transport takes longer to have an effect on the vessel outlet, allowing higher conversion rate by the enzymes. Finally, in the conclusion, we saw that the concentration profile was analyzed for different mesh times where it was possible to notice the effect of the advective portion of mass transfer along the vessel length. With these results, it is possible to predict optimal duration of a meshing process, avoiding short periods of meshing, which could lead to incomplete starch conversion and inefficient work production. And later, the species concentration was investigated at the outlet of the vessel for different lengths. This result allows the selection of optimal vessel length and process flow rate, which naturally influences the effect of the advective mass transfer and the process efficiency. We would like to acknowledge the support provided by CAP, CNPq and FAPERJ and the support provided by Prefeitura de Niterói for the program of development of applied projects. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below.